All right, welcome back class to another session, another lecture on of mice and men. We're moving on to chapter three. If you have not read chapter one and two, what you're doing, um, I set a quiz on chapter two, so please do the quiz. Do the quiz. We're trying to put the grades together to see who not on Edmodo, who not doing them thing. Cool. With that said, we're starting off with the usual style where we're going to read over the quick summary. Um, then I'm going to read some quotations based on setting. Next class will be characters, last class will be themes. And then we will also look on a clip today. So I will be adding a video clip to this video and then we'll discuss the clip. Now, chapter three, summary. Lot, a lot of things happen in chapter three. Slim realizes that Lenny has the mentality of a child. George tells Slim about the supposed rape in weed involving Lenny. Carlson bullies Candy into allowing him to shoot his aging, smelly, and rheumatic dog. George, at Lenny's insistence, describes to him again their dream farm, and Candy, who is listening in, also becomes enchanted by the idea. <clears throat> Curly starts a fight with Lenny, and at George's command, Lenny eventually unleashes his strength and crushes Curly's hand with ease. Slim persuades Curly that to avoid <clears throat> that to avoid further humiliation, it would be in his best interest to pretend that his hand got caught in a machine. Now, a lot of moving parts and a lot of we focus on when we deal with characters, right? But what I want us to look at with regards to setting is, one, the description of the setting that they're in, and two, how they are trying to make this place a home and how their personalities might reject, or, might, or their personalities might be rejected by that setting, right? And the first instance that we notice with this is Slim questioning George about Lenny. And why we want to fit that into the topic of setting is because Slim, Candy, Curly, The Boss, Carlson, Crooks, all of those guys are already at the ranch. So this is their home. This is their domain. George and Lenny have now showed up in this setting and they are trying to fit. They're trying to make this a home. But very quickly, they do realize that they're not welcome. From their show up in chapter two, you know, there, there has been a little bit of resistance towards them. Now Slim, who is like the alpha male of the camp, is questioning this and asking about... Lenny. And when George tells the story, we can really see how he responds to that. We can see that there is a little bit of a pushback, right? With that said, there is a lot that we really need to start breaking down moving forward with this story. And the first thing that we need to realize or break down is the fact that where they are, don't accept them. Where they are, sees them as outcasts and they have to figure out a way to survive then somewhere to work they need to fulfill a dream the first quote that we're looking on <clears throat> the first quote that we're looking on is right at the start of the chapter anytime i talk about setting you know i like to start right at the first part of the chapter because steinbeck has a way of setting up his chapters like that now here we have it Although there was evening brightness showing through the windows of the bunkhouse, inside it was dusk. Through the open door came the thuds and occasional clangs of a, of a horseshoe game. And now and then the sound of voices raised in approval or derision. Now, what they're looking at now is not just how it looks, but how it sounds. And speaking about that horseshoe game, kind of gives us this friendly atmosphere and that is an interesting contrast to look at because even though we get this friendly atmosphere it doesn't feel that friendly towards the, those guys and then that's why um slim starts to ask george about it now the question that i would ask or want you guys to think about is how does setting affect the themes in the, in the story in terms of what the characters are trying to achieve how can these guys make a home of somewhere, even though people seem to be enjoying themselves there, if they can't accept Lenny for who he is, if they don't understand Lenny for who he is, if every minute they're going to attack George and tell George that he should allow Lenny to talk. It might be 
something that will be difficult for George and Lenny to achieve. Which then leads us to the next um, quote that we're going to look on, which is, again, George is telling Lenny about the dream house. But what we'll find is that Candy kind of steps in. And we're going to get into Candy and the characters a little bit more because what's very interesting is what Candy's dog represents as well. Candy feels very old. Just like the dog that they're trying to kill because of how smelly and how useless it seems to be, Candy feels just as useless. And what this does is when they speak about that dream house, it sparks up life in him again. Tell about the house, George, Lenny begged. Sure, we'd have a little house and a room to ourselves, a little fat iron stove, and in the winter we'd keep a fire going in it. <coughs> um, the usual thing happens again, but hold on. Right. George sat entranced with his own picture. In the previous classes, we have done a quote, so you will know how the dream house quote goes. Right? <coughs> when Candy spoke, George sat entranced in his own picture. When Candy spoke, they both jumped as though they had been caught doing something reprehensible. Candy said, You know where's a place like that? George was on guard immediately. Suppose I do, he said. What's that to you? You don't need to tell me where it's at. Might be any place. Sure, said George. That's right. You couldn't find it in a hundred years. Candy went on excitedly. How much they want for a place like that? George watched him suspiciously. Well, I could get it for 600 bucks. The old people that owns it is flat, is flat bust and the old lady needs an operation. Say, what's it to you? You got nothing to do with this. Now, without having to read anymore, what we notice is that Candy is kind of setting himself in the dream. And what, what they're talking about now, Candy is trying to find out if they actually know a place like that. And Candy is now challenging him that he wants to be involved. Eventually, what we learn is that Candy wants to put some of his money into that because a new place will give Candy a new purpose. And that is why the setting becomes important because where he is, he doesn't have a purpose. But if he changes his location, which is this house that he can help them to build, that he will put his stake in, which is his money, it gives him a new sense of purpose. It builds him up. It, it, it helps out this character to become an almost new person. And that is why that, the way that, that they've been describing that dream is not just about it being a house. It's about how George sells this story, not just to Lenny, but also now to Candy. And it's funny because in different ways, Lenny and Candy seem to be the two most helpless people on this, uh, in, on this ranch, right? Lenny mentally, obviously he can help physically, and Candy cannot really help that much physically, but he can help monetarily so now what we find remember we spoke about power and the different types of power now what we find is monetary help or monetary strength financial strength mental strength and physical strength and all of these things are coming into play to go towards this dream house that they want to change the setting that they are in candy sat on the edge of his book Bunk. He scratched the stump of his wrist nervously. I got hurt four years ago, he said. They'll, they'll can me pretty soon, just as soon as I can't swamp out no bunkhouses. They'll put me on the country. Maybe if I give you guys my money, you'll let me hoe in the garden, even after I, I ain't no good at it. And I'll wash dishes and little, little chicken stuff like that. But I'll be on our own place. I'll be let to work on our own place, he said miserably. You see what they done to my dog tonight. They says he wasn't no good to himself or, nor nobody else. When they can me here, I wish somebody would shoot me. But they won't do nothing like that. I won't have no place to go and I can't get no more jobs. So this is what I talk about. It's a sense of purpose that he's building. It's something that is renewing inside of him. Right? Now... What I want us to also look on, that was the last quotation. What I also want us to look on is a video clip. And this is the same, the same section where he's talking about um, that dream plan. And I want us to look on the emotions and how elated each of them seem to move from one place to the other just to get to a better setting. Because in the Great Depression, these areas 
that they're, that they're in has really done a number on them mentally, right? And building their dream house makes all the difference to them. So I'm going to play the clip right now. Well, now, wait a minute. I tell you what. I'd make a will and leave my share to you guys in case I kick off. I ain't got no relatives or nothing. You fellas got any money? Maybe we can do it right now, huh? We got 10 bucks between well, us. We got 10 bucks. 10 bucks. You seen what they done to my dog? They said he wasn't no good no more. I wish somebody'd shoot me when I ain't no good. But they won't do that. They'll can me, and I ain't gonna have no place to go. Look, if me and Lenny work a month and we don't spam nothing, we'll have a hundred bucks. And you got three fifty? Yeah, and you can have every cent of it. That'd be four fifty. Jesus Christ, I bet we could get it for that. And then you and Lenny could go get her started, and I'd get a job and make up the rest. I'm going to take that guy goddamn pop. Sure, sure, sure. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write those two old people that will take it, and Candy will send a hundred dollars to hold it. I sure will. And I'll have 30 more dollars time you guys is ready to quit. <laughs> and I get to tend the rabbits till yeah, yeah, yeah. Till candy. And I'll get the hoe in the garden, even after I ain't no good at it. <laughs> sure. They got a nice stove there? Yeah, yeah, yeah they got, got a nice stove. stove. They got a real nice stove. But I bet that pup like it there with Christ. We're going to do it, goddammit. We're going to fix up that little old place and we'll go live there. Dude, when are we going to do it? One month. Rat smack in one month. Now, don't tell nobody about it. Don't I mean, just us three. Don't nobody tell else. nobody. So now that you've seen the clip, we, we get a better understanding of what these characters are going through and how the setting affects them. Where they are makes them very unhappy. So their dreams and aspirations are tied into the setting that they're in. And now they really want to better themselves. They want to move further. And they want to become they want to become more important. You know, Candy's, Candy's sense of importance has dropped. You understand? Because he's getting old and he feels useless. You know, he's not looking at getting married and having a family. He's missed that boat. Lenny is very simplistic in his mind, right? But he, re he he's at least smart enough to know that that ranch where he's at now is not the dream house that they want. And then there's George. George knows that moving from one ranch to the other will not get him the family and will not settle him down the way that he wants. So... Finding someone who has the money that can actually push them further is actually helping that situation, right? So that is the start of chapter three. The next class that we do is going to be about the characters. And I'll have another video clip there where we can look into how characters represent strength and how that strength is now going to push the plot forward because strength is used, abused, and misused. All right, so guys, please read up chapter three. See you next time. Big up yourself.